friend, we have it.
Hello everyone. Hello. And to welcome you on this sad occasion. We will feel Lena, Bruna, Alpheus, Nibra, the rest. Then to welcome the most of our to support the family, the Nibra family. And even the Nibra family, we pray that God will keep you and give you the strength that you need. Junior of, of bereavement. And for those who have come out here, we welcome you and we pray that as we, whatever is said and done here, and the message is presented today, that we all will be blessed. If it's, the service is done online, I guess. Yeah. Right. For those who are viewing online, we give a special welcome also. And if any family members following, we pray that God will keep you and give you courage and strength also. So I understand we'll stand and sing or open him. The first song on your song sheet. My book is built on nothing. Yes. After which you remain standing. Time to laugh. A time to mourn 
and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend or tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Then I'm going to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Paul is speaking here. He says, But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, or you're not sure, you don't know. Paul doesn't want us to be that way. Concerning them which are asleep, that he sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this is say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Praise the Lord. Then we which are alive, yes, and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with his words. The Father's blessing as a prayer. Father in heaven, thank you, God, for the life of our dear brother, Brother Nimrod. We thank you, God, for the persons he has touched, had touched when he was alive. We thank you for his family siblings and other family members. We pray to God that I will bring comfort to them at this time, O oh God. You, when you are on this earth, you live among men. You are hungry just like us. You are thirsty. There are many persons who are who are sick and even you, you, you heal them. And even some person had died, and you raised him back to life. You are the great life giver. You are the one that brings strength and comfort and cheer. Even when someone has died, we know that he has brought you pain, dear God. But because of sin, Lord, we go through so many bad things in, in this life. Sickness and pain and death and crying and sorrow and wars and calamities and disasters oh God what you have said here in the word that you are coming back again and those who are in the grave and those who are alive those who have known you Lord will be caught up together to meet you in peace when you shall come so God help us today that we will all make our calling and election show and, and accept you as Lord and Savior of our lives May God, that if we are we die, we we'll drive the hope, and whether we are alive when we shall come, oh God, we we'll have that hope in seeing you. We ask so God that those blessed service today. Pray for Pastor Boyin as he presents the word, Lord, give him a message that will reach the family and also those who have come out to support the family. And if you ask for God that those forgive us all our sins, cleanse us, and take charge of his service. And bless the family, members again, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You may have your seats. You may have your seats. Now, on behalf of the pastor, the elders, the members of this church here, and like to extend our deepest condolences or sympathy. 
to the Nimrod family, Brother Nimrod, senior, and he was a member of this church here. Uh, we pray that God will continue to keep you all in the, the Nimrod family, Thank you. Uh, the Paul family and others, and God will give you strength and courage to face these trying times. The Bible refers to the end of the steam. But thank God for the resurrection. Yeah. Thank God for the hope that we have. Yeah. That He goes beyond this life here. And God will bless you all and keep you yes. in the time of sorrow. Yes. God bless you all in the name of all family. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bro, as she read, I remember some of them still there. Yeah. All right. Now this time we have a special song. Yeah. We have a special song. So, uh,
one is from, from his cousin in England, so I'm going to be playing it in a minute. For my loving brother, you show me a lot of things. I learned a lot I did not know. But you forgot to teach me one last thing, how to let you go. I know you did not mean to leave me. Sometimes we have no choice. I miss being your little sister, hearing my name called by your voice. I wish I got to say I love you before you were given to the sky. If God could grant me one last wish, I will ask to say goodbye. You always meant a lot to me. I could never love you less. I know it's true when they say he only takes the best. You will always be in our hearts. Love you forever. Alphia Slimani. So this one is from Arthur, his cousin. Good morning all. I'm cousin Arthur from London. First cousin of Arthur. You were the, like a brother to me while growing up in Lamarck, St. Patrick. As I think back to our younger days, we played cricket together, marbles, and flew our kites together. We had lots of fun and laughter growing up. I admire Alpheus as he was very protective of me and my sister Joycelyn and our cousins Kenneth and his younger brother Tony, also known as Coco. I remember him being a kind and quiet man and the family loved him because he was always so polite. I remember cousin Jesse always looking out for us and my younger brothers. Cousin Elpheus loved, cousin Elpheus loved to take part in short me and I was always worried about him and my other cousins who played together in the band. Many times I wanted to get involved, but Elpheus always sent me home. <laughs> always playing the big brother. But Elpheus was a quiet man, and when our grandmother died in 1965, he was very upset, and we could not find him for a family photo. I knew how upset he was, but good memories of him will always stay with me. Rest in peace, my cousin. You will always be in my heart. Okay, I have one more from your sister, Sarah, Trader. Good day. I'm sorry that I'm losing the family at Sarah. I did not grow up with Alpheus, but I met him when I came back to the middle as a teenager. He took me all around. At this point in time, we started to communicate and we used to call him on the phone and we chat and so on. Just before COVID came, I was about to come to with my sisters, but I didn't make it. So we used to talk on video, make video calls to one another. So sorry that I didn't get to meet with him some more. I want to give my condolences to my family. And the Midland fam family would like to thank everyone for all the support thoughts and prayers over the past few weeks. Okay, so that's all the tributes I have. If anyone wants to come up, they can come.
you want to leave. Okay, so I have a right. song to play also before the end of the tribute.
uncommon experience there. So the human family do not have any coping mechanism to deal with the hurt and pain that gets separation because of this. Three times as, uh, as day is the best person we can talk about is Jesus. Yeah, because Jesus is the one that understands everything that we go through. People might say, yes, I'm sorry, but they don't understand. He knows. In fact, the Bible says he's touched with the feeling of coming from him. And so I hope to bring you hope. From John chapter 11. Very well known story. I'm going to read a few verses 21 to 27. Um, said, then said Mary unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died yet. But I know that even up, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it this. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again. In the resurrection, at the last day. When she was thinking about the resurrection on the last day. That's when Jesus came back to her. But hear what Jesus said. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection to life. He that liveth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. But believest, believest thou this? She said unto him, Look here, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son for which you come to the world. Now I tell my Shall someone drama at the graveyard? Drama at the graveyard. Yes, boys, Father, we give thanks. This afternoon, for life. Thank you, the person. And we some of us, we are here, but we are not 100%, but we are still in the land of the living. And you blessed us this morning, you provided food for us, you gave us water to drink. 
and uh, we are here to support and uh, to express our sympathies to the family. Sad occasion to say goodbye, but because you are part of because of Jesus, and this is not new to you, uh, we place the entire service to, uh, to you in your hands so that you can use the great comfort to those of us who are sad and mourning. Thank you for it, what you've done for us. And thank you for the story that can give us courage to be great in Jesus' name. Drama at the graveyard. So well, while Jesus was on this earth, he had a habit of moving from place to place. And everywhere Jesus went, at the end of the day, or before the day ends, you can expect that there might be some kind of drama. And one time he went to a wedding. And the wedding was, as we say, it was in full swing. And the wine ran out. His mother went to him and said, they have the wine. The Bible said that six what was. And the word was, but we don't know what word was. Ah. But for you to understand, one of these water parts was able to hold about 20 to 20 gallons of water. That's what five or six of, of those white boxes are around. So Jesus told them to fill it up with water. And then after it filled up with water, it will pour out. And when they pour out, they got wine. Yeah. That's great job. Huh? They were going, and the wine tasted, the Bible said the wine tasted so good that when they drank it, the people said, What? You left the best for last? <laughs> it was drama, I could imagine. And another time he went in the desert, there were about 5,000 men. And you know, anytime Jesus crawled, a girl around Jesus, they are always more women and the men. So, 5,000 men, hungry men, and they had nothing to eat. Imagine, in a desert, there is no place to buy food, nothing. Dry. When they found out, they found out that there was a little boy there with five small loaves. In the desert. And one of these disciples asked, what, what are these? What is five loaves and two fishes to, to feed five thousand men? And the Bible says Jesus blessed it, and at the end he fed five thousand men. And when they were finished eating, they collected twelve baskets. That was very drama. Yeah, that was very drama. Five thousand hungry men fed. Well, if a man like Jesus was on his earth today, everywhere he went, you would have a TV camera. CNN would be there, BBC would be there, even GDM might have been there to catch the drama and report it as breaking news. In John chapter 11, uh, there's a story, a dramatic story recorded. In John chapter 11, John, the Bible says in John chapter 11 that there was a family, a uh, family of, of three, Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha. They live in a town called Bethany. Now they were, they were among the most dedicated and loyal disciples of Jesus. They were good friends of Jesus. And uh, Jesus himself had no place to stay. So he needed a place of comfort and chair he find back in the home, home of Lazarus and Mary. They were very good friends. You see, once Jesus is around, everything goes perfect. No bad things really can happen. But in his absence, Sorrow ends at that little home. Lazarus fell sick and he was getting sick and he was getting sick very fast. 
So with his sister sensing that they were not able to handle it, they sent a message to Jesus and tell him, Jesus, the one who you love is the compass. And you send a message to Jesus. He was about, the Bible says that was two days a week. And walking distance because, you know, the Louis Noe, it's not like you know, we have transportation. The place was very rugged and it was, wherever it was, it would take him about two days to get back there. So, I think when, when Jesus gave a message, he should go one day. Jesus, in my view, should have left and gone to be with Mary and Martha one time because they had each other. The brother said. But John chapter uh, 11, verse 6 says, When he heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days ill in the same place. Yeah. He said, Two more days in the place. And, uh, and the Bible says that when Jesus decided to go back there, he found that Lazarus was dead and already buried for four days. He was four days in the tomb. But before he decided to, to go back, he had his disciples had another conversation. In John chapter 11, verse 11, he says, This thing said he, and after that he said unto them, Oh, my friend Lazarus, sleep it, but I go that I may awake him. And his disciples said, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. So they thought he was talking about. They sleep, sleep to wake, sleep to wake up. But Jesus, in verse 30, he says, How did Jesus speak of his death? But they thought he had spoken of him taking the rest and sleep. So to us, we sleep and this is the rest. But to Jesus, when you die, but it's asleep. Because Jesus has no pro problem with death. Death is not a problem for Jesus. So when he went back to the to Bethany and he met um, Martha and was when he says, then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was come went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Imagine that. I said, we sent to call you after four days. Uh, you just come. So Mary sat in the house. She, she didn't go. But Martha went. And then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother would not have died. Just watch it in the presence of Jesus. The devil and sin and sickness and they have no power. And but I know that this is what Martha said, but I know that even now, whatever thou would ask of God, God will give you. Amen. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall live again. And if Jesus said to tell you something, you can't believe it. Because this he speaks the truth. And he knows what's best. He said to all, Thy brother will live again. Mother said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said, No, I am the resurrection of the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever shall, whosoever liveth and believeth in me, shall never die. Amen. And when he had, had conversation, Martha counsel, counsel Martha, she went and verse 28, she told, and when she had so said, she went away and called me, that's your sister, and told her secretly, saying, The master is come 
and call the police. So as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come to the tomb, but was in that place where Martha met him. Then when Mary was come, when Jesus was he was so happy and saw him. This is what Mary said. She fell down at his feet and she said, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. You see, brother, ladies and gentlemen, the people believed that it was too late. Jesus had come back too late. He had come back a little earlier. Maybe he had a chance to, to, to heal him. But now he's dead and he's dead four days. So, he doesn't seem to have a chance that he come back to life. Now, so, when she tells you that, that my, my brother will not be so here, Lord. My last one of that day, Jesus said, where have you been? Where are you buried? Yes, by that time, if he had um, cameras around, they would have been interested to, to, to know what he was he up to. And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. So the first thing by the way, the Bible says, Jesus wept. John 11, 12, the shortest passage in the scripture. John 11, 12, Jesus wept. Jesus cried. And the people said, Behold, for this man which opened the eyes of the blind had caused even this man to not have died. So the people were convinced that if Jesus was around, his Lazarus was going to die. So they took Jesus by the tomb blood. There is John. There was a stone rolled in front of the tomb. Jesus told them, go move the stone. Above the stone. And after Jesus prayed, the Bible says in verse 43. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> I can imagine you come there, a pin job. Everybody was quiet to see what would happen. And suddenly there was a stir in the tomb where Lazarus was. Uh, his, his blood streamed came back. His heart began to pump blood. He came back alive and then the Bible says he came and stood in front of the two. My God. If I was there, perhaps, perhaps, I would have run. If, 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 if someone just say here, I just rise up. Some of you might. But that was a great, that was the greatest miracle that Jesus performed. Why, why do I choose such a passage this evening? I chose this passage this evening because Jesus said to, to Martha, and what he said to Martha, he said to you and to me, because the pronoun of is actually plain, obvious, that he cannot hear one thing. But we are here, we are here, and we are receiving encouragement from God's word. So that we, because, because, like so and so, anytime any one of us can be there. And, 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 and uh, what Jesus said to Martha, he said the same thing to her. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. This statement is a declaration of Jesus' power over death and his ability to give life eternal to those who believe in him. And, uh, it is a message of hope for us today. And you have a message of comfort for those who have lost loved ones. That Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And a reminder that death is not the end for those who have faith in Jesus. It was emphasizes the importance of belief in Jesus. So one of these days, now, when Jesus went to where Lazarus was buried, he made a very specific call. 
being the resurrection and the life. If he had just said, come forth, all the dead sleeping men had come forth. But this time it was one was it Lazarus, so he was very specific. He said, Lazarus come forth. But you know, there's coming a day that he is going to make a call. And all those that are sleeping in the grave shall hear God. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 says, Paul says, that the word, I will not have you to be ignorant brethren, concerning them which have sleep, that we sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also who would sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them that are sick. And watch it now. The same call that Jesus made to Lazarus is going to make it. You read right? 1 Thessalonians 4, 6, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with his show. Amen. And the voice of the archangels and with the church of God and the dead in Christ shall rise forth. So when the Lord shall, the church shall sound and the archangel shall sound his voice, dead in Christ shall rise forth. Uh, Martha talked up, talked up to Jesus about the resurrection. There is that going to be a resurrection or two resurrections. One of those who are who died in Christ and they will be up coming up in the first resurrection. I don't know. Some people believe that when you die you will die. If you believe that this is well, the Bible says that when Jesus comes, the dead in Christ will rise first. Right? And those of, not only that, those who are alive, who are believing in Jesus, the person is they believe in Jesus? You see it? Yes. All of us, we believe that Jesus came to this world. came to die for our sins. He came to this world. He was born as a baby in Bethlehem. And he went through all the trials. And they persecuted him and crucified him on the cross. But thank God, on the day of the resurrection, the resurrection Sunday morning, he came out of the, the grave. And he won the victory over the devil and the grave for you and for me. So the Lord, that says that the Lord himself shall be sent from heaven with the shout. And with the voice of the angels, and with the truth of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise for us. Then, which we which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together to be dead. We then need the clouds, amen, to meet the Lord in the air. What a wonderful time that's going to be. So we will be saying goodbye or bye bye or bye bye to all the troubles. Some, 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 sometimes you don't know what to do. Some people know where next meal is coming from. And when we look at the news and you see what's happening in the middle right now. Those kind of hearts and pain and tears will be no more. You will be no more. say goodbye. But you know, Jesus made a promise. And this promise is the same promise that Paul believed and the same promise that Martha believed when she said, I the resurrection last week. Jesus said to us, to us, to you, very well who pass it, John 41 to let them tell happy children. When you see all of what is going to take place on earth, the troubles, the struggles, the COVID, the sickness, the pain, some people have pain all over their bodies. The back is not bad, back pain is some knee pain. Some knee pain, some to take, some kind of pain. And sometimes you go to sleep tonight and when you wake up in the morning, something hurts you. Yeah? Uh, so he, he said, well, Jesus said, well, no, no, don't worry about too much about this thing. All you need to do is to believe in God. In my father's house, a many mansions. I eat to one so I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Now this 
was this part of the promise is what I like the best. So if Jesus says that he's going to prepare a place for you, this is suggested to me that the place we have is not a place. This is suggested to us the house we have is not the real place. And yet we thank God for it. We work hard for it. We would like to live in a nice place. But Jesus has a better place for us. He said, I'm going to. And, and, and he gave this promise more than 2,000 years ago. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, you look at this now. He says, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, then ye will be also. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers, this, this, this is hope. Oh, this, is, this, is, this is courage. This is what gives us glory. This is what gives us happiness to know that Jesus is coming back. Coming back to put an end to sin and suffering and pain and death. And we that are alive, we have a chance to go with him. But he says that he must believe in him. This evening I hope and trust that all of us here with Say to yourself, Jesus, I believe in you. I trust you. Confidence in you. When you come in your glory, I want to be saved. And, 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 and it's too late now for all players to claim Jesus, but I know he loved Jesus. And nobody knows what went on between the last few minutes with he and God. So let's hope by God's grace, he make it to heaven. But we that are alive, we have a chance. We have a, the opportunity right now. And we can make it right with Jesus. So when it comes, we will be able to be the Lord and Savior and go home to inherit the place they have gone and made for us. At this time, I'd like to say a word, spend some word of prayer for our family. So, our heads with me, Father in heaven, it was with great grateful heart. We come before you to give a thanks for the life of our dear brother, friend, uh, who we live to meet and know, knew him for such a long time. So we thank you, brother. But today we have come to say, Oh Father, goodbye. And for this, we are sad. And we know that you. Our consciousness. And so I pray this evening that you give the family courage and give them strength. Help them to know that Jesus is right there close by. And even if Alphaeus would be his departing because the void and he will be missed, Jesus is able to fulfill up the void and take the place where he usually be in their hearts. Give them courage this evening, Lord, and help them to know that you love them. Help them to know that you care for them. Those who travel from a way to be with us today, I thank you for traveling amongst us for them. And when they, they take that plane to go back again, I pray that you give them, that you guide them, and you take them back safely. Those of the fa uh, members of the family who, what, who can't be with us today and are looking online and also lift them up in prayer. Yeah. Give them courage and help them, help them to know that God understands what everyone is going through. And when they feel down, when they feel lonely, they will, they will call, cry to you. And in, the need, in, the, in that hour, you will support them. So Lord, we all that are alive here. I've been mean, reminded of what you come. And you promise that you come to prepare a place and you will come again. I pray God that you'll be with us and help us to make it right with you. So that when Jesus come again and let your body close, death Christ shall rise for us. If we die before, that we will come up in force of If we are alive, we'll join them and you to meet you in the air. 
and you will take us to a place that is going to prepare for us. Thank you for the promise. Thank you for the hope that there is in Jesus. And again, Lord, when all our children and dead, we shall come back. Grant us all the privilege to be saved in your kingdom, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all thank Pastor Bowen for this message today. A message of hope, family members, and well wishers who have come out here. A message that goes beyond this life here. That even though we die, yet we shall live again. Thank you very much, Pastor Bowen. Now this time we'll have our eulogy. Person responsible? Right. After we have a special song. Alphys Nimrod was born on May 28, 1953, to the proud parents of Joseph Nimrod and Celia Paul Nimrod, both deceased. Alphys grew up in La Mode St. Patrick, but spent all his years in legal peace. Alphys had two kids, Steve and Gillian. Sadly, Julian passed in 2020. He left behind three beautiful grandchildren, Star, Javon, and Jamar. Alpheus loved life, loved playing shot knee during carnival time. He also took some crazy chances, but to his family, he was loving and caring. After Odal died in 1979, Alpheus would make sure that his younger siblings, Naomi and Debbie, were taken care of. Alpheus was employed at the Sotez Love Pool for many years. After his retirement, he spent lots of time by Nicole's shop in Samaritan. Anytime you need him, just go there and you will surely find him. Sadly, on September 11th, 2023, he died. Sitting at the favorite corner by the shop. On behalf of Debbie, we will greatly miss Alpheus by the life that he, the lives that he has touched. We will miss you, brother, until we meet again. Special thanks to Sherry Ann Bola, Nakita Bola, and husband, Mr. Vento and Knox for the kindness you have shown to our brother while he was there with us. The family would like to thank everyone for the kind words of encouragement during this difficult time. Thank you.
and followed by the family members and then the
25 to 4.
Tutti gli stati c'è tu e compagni mi sono tutti Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
final right now. I pray God that you will give me courage. Amen. Revelation chapter 1. From verse 1. Revelation says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth will pass away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the whole city in New Jerusalem come down from heaven to prevail as a bride at dawn from heaven. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former thing that passes. And he that sat on his throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give it unto you that thirst of the fountain of the word of life with it. For seven says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The last thing now, the treasure of the
Remembering as you do that all the issues of life are in the hands of the everlasting Father, so of love and compassion, and that He has promised eternal life to those who love Him. Amen. That's all for them. All right, so let's see the golden morning and we'll start it off. The golden morning is past approach. Jesus soon will come. Jesus soon will come. To take his faithful life. Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. Oh, uh-huh. 
Blue scraping, man. Blue scraping. Yeah, blue scraping, hello.
No, 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 we know I say, we know I say. So, and they could have called inside and make it sure. They could push the game. And every night they pray now using it. Yeah, they pray now. Okay. You check? And you don't even know you got. <laughs> I mean she maybe go she maybe go she maybe go walking far in again. We have to put some money. Let's put some money.